Welcome back to John Sox Trumpet. Today I'll be talking about valve venting, how it works, and some things you might consider before getting it done. Have any of you ever felt the pop? The pop is a pressure equalization that can be corrected by one of my favorite trumpet modifications, the vented valve. So a vented valve is actually, it's a regular trumpet piston that has a very small hole drilled into it that allows air to pass freely from outside the trumpet in and out of the third valve slide without the valve being depressed. I like vented third valve slides so much that I actually have six vented valve pistons in my collection. So it's actually a pretty common misconception that valve vents are like holes in the trumpet slide or something, but no, it's actually a hole in the piston, which only affects the way the instrument operates when the valve is in the out position and this slide's not being used anyway. When the valve is in the up position, that hole matches up with the top leg, it's the bottom. The bottom leg of the third valve slide right here, and it connects an air path from outside of the bottom of the trumpet into this valve area. That way you can move the slide in and out without depressing the valve. So rotary trumpets also have vented valves, but they look pretty different. As you can see here on my Vimon rotary trumpet, it has a trigger that operates both the first and third valve slide simultaneously. Unfortunately, that means if I was just gonna use the third valve slide or just the first valve slide and wanted to adjust the slide lengths, every time it would pop unless the valve was vented. The vent on a rotary trumpet is a small hole on the side of the cylindrical rotary valve casing, which allows air to pass easily into the first and third valve slides. Here you can hear the sound of the valve venting. Okay, so why should you get a vented valve? Well, there are several reasons that it is convenient to have a vented valve. Um, one of them is that it allows you to make very small micro adjustments to the third valve slide length without having to press down the valve. So I can be in the middle of playing a melody on the trumpet using just my first and second valve slides and think, oh, I've got a really interesting low D lick coming up and I don't have to stop or preset the third valve in any way. I can just push it out and then it's fully prepared for when I play. Boop, done, no problem. Valve venting can especially help when you're playing in a soft slurred passage where even the smallest interruption in the air pressure can disrupt your embouchure and you lose the sound. Also having the valve vented gives me a little bit more flexibility as a second player where I'm often trying to prepare for whatever chord function is coming next. Even when I'm playing pianissimo or something, it's really, really helpful to not have that or the difference in pressure that interrupts the embouchure. Another case where having a vented valve can be really useful is if you have an instrument with a triggered third valve slide. This is because you can't coordinate the movement of the third slide as well as you do with a ring, just moving with your fingers, which means that the return and the extension are a little bit out of sync with what you're trying to do. So that <laughs> creates a situation where you're gonna have a really loud or very serious pop either way. If you have a vented third valve piston, I would definitely recommend keeping a hair tie available. And if you don't have a hair tie, you can either use one of these Yamaha silicone things, um, one of these Yamaha silicone valve things. I don't know what to call this. This is because if you happen to play one-handed or do a plunger solo or something, the slide will go to its fullest extent almost right away. In which case it is super important that you have your stop rod screwed in all the way. Don't use a rubber band because the sulfur in the rubber band will actually eat away at the silver and cause permanent damage to your plating. Another thing about vented valves is that whenever you pick up the trumpet, you'll have to put your finger in the third valve slide ring to bring it back in. Anybody who has a, an old Bach trumpet with low valve compression knows what I'm talking about already. I've also seen vented valves on first valve slides before, but make sure you have a stop rod added to make sure your first valve slide won't fall out when it's in the case. I would recommend in the strongest possible terms having a very qualified repair person do these things for you. In my case, I've had valve vents done by not only Charlie Melk of Charlie's Brassworks, but also Osmond Music and Rich Ida's Brass Workshop. Other high-level technicians that I'm aware do valve venting include Josh Landris or Mike Del Quadro. A good rule of thumb is if you're going to a tech and asking them to do a valve vent, if they have to ask you what you're talking about, go somewhere else. 
Some manufacturers like Getson or Edwards offer valve venting as an option or a feature on trumpets that they make. This is ideal because then the valve can be vented before the piston is lapped for the exact piston casing that you're going to be putting it into. But it's not really a standard feature because it's not requested that often. Over time, pistons naturally wear down whether the valve is vented or not. This is caused by air and microscopic pieces of crud that can slowly grind down the monel of your valves, leading to a loss of compression. I've heard from experienced technicians that venting the piston could contribute to a more pronounced loss of valve compression, but I haven't personally experienced this yet in the five years that I've been using vented pistons. So we just have to accept that when we make modifications to the trumpet, there will probably be a small change in how it plays. But I haven't personally noticed a difference in how my instrument plays after getting the valve vented. Unfortunately, there's no real way to test this because once the valve is vented, there's no way to go back. Even if I had another piston that was technically meant to fit this particular trumpet, it wouldn't necessarily be a perfect fit and it might still have different playing characteristics. The last time I had a valve venting done by a professional repair tech, it only costed about $40. So I consider this to be a very affordable customization for the trumpet. So hopefully this video is able to answer any questions you might have about valve venting. This is the beginning of a larger series about trumpet modifications in general, and this one is one of the cheapest and most affordable that I can think of. Thanks so much for joining me today on John Talks Trumpet. Like and subscribe if you want to see more nerdy trumpet content. New videos every Tuesday.